Sim Racing Dan here with the uh, tale of two races here at Mid Ohio in the Star Mazda. Pretty soon you'll understand why that is. But first, we get off with a great start here as I start to pull away from the uh, car to my right. But as he goes around the outside, I give him plenty of room and uh, take that safely on the inside in order to not uh, go wide and run into him. And turn one, or rather turn two, navigated successfully here. Turn one comes up on you so quickly at the beginning, it's almost like it's uh, not even the first turn. Just part of the start. Mid Ohio is a great track. This is, for me, the toughest part right here as the suspension unloads and uh, you lose tons of uh, grip back in the back end. Very, very easy to lose control there. This is another fairly tricky section, but uh, generally don't have too much trouble with it. Depends on the car, really. Uh, this uh, Star Mazda, I had it decked out with plenty of downforce, so uh, it kept the uh, rear end grip through that uh, hill crest without any trouble. A lot of uh, lower downforce cars do have some, some difficulty there, and you have to lift. I went a little bit wide here, not my preferred line. I like to hug the uh, pit exit line usually uh, as I go through that turn and then go wide just at the end. And I also like to hug the inside right there on turn two. I think mostly just, uh, I have to check, but I think the camber on that turn doesn't uh, suit a, a wide line very well. But also, I'm always afraid of going off in the grass. In seventh position here, as we Continue through lap two. Looks like the field is, uh, whoa, we got a spin here, and can't tell who that is, but went off on the left, but did a great job uh, not crashing to the wall, and uh, that was a zero contact uh, spin. The whole field made it through uh, pretty safely, so good job everyone for, uh, for that. It's always nice to see when people pay attention and uh, when the dust kicks up, they take evasive maneuvers immediately. Heading here now through, um, let's see, still in the single digits of laps. It looks like I have definitely lost a whole lot of um, ground here. And I believe this is David, or Dennis, made a great move on the inside there, but uh, he had a little bit too much speed, went a little bit wide on the turn exit, couldn't get it turned. Heading down the, the uh, straight, I was able to get a little bit better exit speed, and that gives me the next corner as he settles in behind me. But uh, a great move on his part there. It turns out, I mean, he solidly outbreaks me. He could have gone with a little bit less entry speed and still pulled the pass off without it being a dive bomb. So um, if he'd done that, he certainly would have maintained the pass. Had a little bit of trouble there and went a little bit fast and wide in through there, but held it just fine. And that was, I guess, lap eight, because this one looks like it's lap nine. There's a better line. We've got a spin. And someone had troubles. I don't know if that was contact or two people spinning or a spin and uh, avoidance maneuvers, but that gave me two positions right there. And that should be good for fifth, I believe. Maybe sixth if uh, someone else has passed me, but I don't think they have. I went for the oval gear set here on Mid-Ohio. The short one was too short, 
Uh, you, you redlined on the uh, end of that straight, and um, the long one felt very long. You barely used six gear at all. The oval one seemed just right. Get out of fifth, get into sixth, and uh, you're just redlining as you enter the turn. And let's see, looks like I lost a little bit and I can't really blame the guy behind me there because um, he was two cars behind and just didn't have time to see that I had gone uh, a little bit sideways. All right, so we try, try again. Sometimes that's just how the race ends. And heading into turn one, we've got car on the left, left, or rather on my right clips, my right front wheel. And that sets my steering off a little bit. I and everyone behind me got slowed down as I tried to recover from that little knock. And now I'm evaluating the car to see what kind of speed I can get out of it with this damage to my front suspension. I'm certainly not going to give up here. Not on lap one, not with uh, just a slight bit of damage that I've taken. But I am going to give up a position here as uh, I'm not risk ready to risk uh, full speed through turns yet and I went wide there because it looked like um, the uh, red car ahead of me was going to have a little bit of trouble and I was preemptively avoiding but it turned out to be unneeded caution but uh, that's a whole lot better than needed caution when it isn't there still trying to feel out the car wheel bent a little bit to the left here and the car ahead of me spins off to the right hey I can't blame him I'm familiar with that and as I cross the start finish this is only lap one so I can't tell how far off pace I am yet so we head into lap two to see oh definitely having some troubles there got squirrely under the turn but was able to recover here a car goes off, and I easily get by. And um, it ended up being that uh, until I was really comfortable with the car and its new configuration, if you will, um, I was about a second slower per lap. I was normally running in the uh, low to mid 120s, and uh, this put me into the 121s. Lost that position there to the uh, to Juan Carlo, I believe that is, uh, who went off and uh, got on, but with enough speed to get by me. Still, as I'm feeling out, getting uh, a feel for my new set of wheels here. Fighting every moment here until I get really comfortable and, and understand how to predict the car. You can see me sawing at the wheel as it starts to break loose when I uh, try to treat it like it normally would uh, want to be treated through these turns. Constantly correcting up back to uh, stop the overseer oversteer from, from spinning me. Taking turn one much more cautiously now, dropping down into third gear. And here we're up well into the teens of laps. And oh my gosh, I go wide on that turn. Way more than I wanted to. Paul there. Paul uh, went off on the inside. I think that at this point in the race, I think we're around lap, lap 18, um, that front uh, wheel that got knocked started to uh, scrub enough that it had lost uh, some traction. I think it probably overheated somewhat and uh, didn't like me pushing it really hard through the turns. So now as I come down through and the next lap headed towards turn two, you th would think that I would have learned from my last lap not to push that braking quite as much. Fortunately, my spin is very uh, forgiving and it's a full 360 and I get back onto the track with just one position loss there. Was in seventh, that puts me down into ninth though.
And now it's a game to see if I can nurse this car around and hope for some mistake on the part of someone ahead of me. I've learned to always race, race hard, as hard as you can, no matter where you are compared to the guy ahead of you, because you never know when they're going to screw up, lose 10 seconds, and bam, there you are, making the pass. Cloud of smoke. Where there's smoke, there's a car that's gone off. That's good enough. Well, it looks like I had gotten myself into eighth, so that looks like it'll push me back. It was Paul again. Paul! who had uh, spun on the, or had gone on the inside there when I went uh, wide that first time. So Paul is back behind me. We're in the 20s of laps out of uh, 31. But the question is, can I keep Paul behind me? He's 0 .7, 0 .8 seconds behind me here. Uh, and it's going to be tricky to keep him there. He's definitely faster around the track, but obviously making mistakes, as I said. Always push it like you're uh, racing right behind someone because you never know when they're going to screw up and, and when those precious seconds that you're getting per lap by uh, driving nice and hard and fast are going to make the difference between the pass and just settling in behind a guy who's faster than you are. I found that turn, that right-hander, quite challenging in the car as it was. I forgot to shift down to third there. Definitely lost some time. Paul looks like he's .3 seconds behind me. And he's probably going to make the pass on the inside here. No, he decides to be patient. He's got laps left, and there's no sense in dive bombing, but he gets a better exit there. It goes to my right, and he should be showing up on my right-hand screen in just a moment. There he is. Paul making a nice, clean pass down the straight and into the braking zone without any trouble. And that'll kick me back down to ninth position. Paul going really slowly through there. Well, maybe that's one place he hasn't spun on the track yet and doesn't want to add it to his resume. And here we are in the last lap. I'm still behind Paul by several seconds, so through the last turn sequence, I think that uh, this is pretty much going to end with a ninth place finish. And there you go. But a fun race. Challenging, but fun.